I hate open doors. Especially in the dark. There's just something really off about them. And even if you know for a fact that ghosts and demons aren't real, or in a more realistic sense, you know that a serial killer isn't there to knife you, it just feels that something will pop out of it, and the tension is what we're scared about. And when you go play something like Five Nights or Resident Evil, the scariest part is the anticipation of the jump scare, but when you get used to it, it's not quite scary anymore, isn't it? But I like the kind of horror that sticks. The one that sticks at the back of your mind, something that doesn't need to come at you at full force screaming to scare you, but something that goes at the back of your head, and the next time you're walking to your car at 11 p.m., you'll be thinking of that one one scene from that one movie or game and you'll be sent running towards your car at full sprint. The ones that can pull that style of horror off become one of the best. Never relying on shock, letting the immersion run its course. Those are the good ones. But there's also another style of atmospheric horror that doesn't start out telling you up front that it's a horror. Rather, this style of atmospheric horror uses the open door tension and masks it in a situation where horror is not expected and you just let the audience feel something is a bit off and let the viewer's brain create the horror for you. You wanna see examples of where this is done well? Okay, strap up, cause I have three, each for games, TV, movie, you pick your poison, do them all, let's go. Firewatch. It's not quite horror in the sense that there's a big monster by the end. It just does all the tricks of atmospheric horror really well. We're in this forest, running away from some life problems, looking for a place to think things through, and then you're suddenly wrapped up in this mystery, and suddenly you're questioning what you're seeing and what's being said, and if you can even trust the game. It's a game that's all storytelling and atmosphere, but it's short and sweet. Five hours is all you need. It's beautifully voice acted, and it has this painted, low-poly style that, that just fits the autumn or summer vibes. Just pay attention to what you experience and not what the game is out to tell you. Midsummer is the story about a couple going through some tough times and go to a retreat in a village in Sweden to think things through. See a theming here. All the while getting ingratiated with the culture, the audience begin to unravel these two characters. All the while, the village, as the unseen third character, moves in the background. Literally moves in the background. Look at the mountains, they're moving. You need to pay attention to what is going on in this movie. This movie is just an anxiety trip, man. Everything feels unsettling. Even though what you're given at face value is, you know, it's, it's, it's just a nice village and it's supposed to be a, a love story, a breakup story, but it suddenly reveals itself slowly and well, the climax is, ugh, watch it, you'll see for yourself. School Live. Now, School Live is special. School Live is about this group of high school students who live in a school. They live ordinary lives and attend class and have a garden in the rooftop, but they can never leave the school. Now, why is that? I don't know. But look at this cute opening theme. Yeah, it's really cute. It's really nice. You know, look at all these girls. What? What? Did you see something there? I have no idea what you're talking about. All seriousness. School Live is the very definition of storytelling through atmosphere, as it lets the background do the talking. While our girls immerse themselves in their daily lives, something strange is happening, and you really can't tell what's going on until they pull the curtain out. And once they do, it becomes a little bit horror light after that, but the first three or four episodes will have you for a loop. These are some of that eerie, hidden in plain sight kind of horror that I really love. The kind of horror that digs through your psyche when you find yourself bored and let your mind linger in the dark places. And I love that kind of horror. Not the jump scare stuff. I'm already twitchy enough from the amount of coffee I drink every day. 